position. David Ballantyne, uh, I'm the manager here. I'm also the son of Salem. All right. Self, self, self-nominated, but it's found in the reeds of the Lorraine River. All right. Voting is a babe. Yeah. I'm an analog guy. And through and through. Records, records preferred. And you know. what, why does analog sound better? See, well, you know, I mean, from the technical side, I'm not too much of a, a aficionado or an expert. Uh, I do think it sounds bigger and warmer. Um, I think the thing I've noticed a lot too about CDs, that it feels that when you turn a CD up really loud or an MP3 really loud, it feel, it gets louder in a, in a space in your ears. It's brighter and more annoying to me. <laughs> it, you know, it, I don't. It's more like it fills your ear and it's distracting and it hurts more. If I turn up a record really loud, I find that I can also have a conversation still pretty well. Like, there's something about the digital sound, when it gets too loud, it fills up this, this space in your ear that is used, I think, a lot. And you know, I don't quite know how I got there, but I, that's kind of how I feel about it at this point. Right. And I've listened to a lot of CDs loud, don't get me wrong. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm driving in the car, and, you know, all the time, here at work. I don't play records all day, I don't get time for that, you know? But, but that's one of the reasons I like records, too. It takes a little more time. It's a little more of a, it's an action, you know, it's, it's you got, you're thinking about what you're doing, you got to be careful, you got to take care of it. Everything else is so disposable in society, it's nice to have a few things you got to take care of. It used to be more of an exclusively vintage, older crowd kind of a thing. Um, I think there's always been a cool niche of young kids who are into it, for good reason, it's just cool, you know, and whatever, people, people like doing retro things, so it's doing retro is in, you know, but I think too now a lot of a lot of popularity is gained in a backlash to disposable society. You can get a vinyl of any new band from Green Day to Death Cab to the smallest indie rock band like a local band, Typhoon from Portland, X Salem Kids, their their LP, their first LP comes out next month. So you know what I mean? It kinda yeah. for the youth it's just broadening all the time. As long as they can keep the prices down. I think it's a backlash to MP3s and stuff. Really? Yeah, I mean, I mean there's enough kids. Everyone can get an MP3. You can bit tour anything you want in the whole yeah, world. Exactly. If you want, if you really want something, I mean, and it comes down to two respect too. I think a lot of kids feel like, you know, they don't want to buy CDs anymore. I get that, and they're done with CDs. That's fine, you know. I, I but if they really want to support somebody. You really want to support an artist. I love Spoon. If I want to support Spoon, I'm gonna buy their record, and smartly. Smartly, uh, all these artists are putting in CDs or MP3 codes in with the records now. So it kind of curbs both the, both the bit torning, you know, and, you know, but I mean, bit torning, downloading, it, it, it's, it's a fact. There's no going back, you know, so all the artists better roll with the punch and hold on, you know, it's just, it's just a change. Oh yeah, every 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 year is better. It's bigger. It's bigger and bigger for sure. For sure. So would you Last, say, this whole week's been pretty hot too. A lot yeah. of people thinking about it. So a lot of people buying records. Do you, do you sell on average more records than CDs? It's getting there. It's eclipsing. I did used used CDs still sell reasonably well, mm -hmm. but you know, they're pretty cheap. Yeah, we buy them cheap. We sell them cheap. You know, and I think that appeals to people too. In shitty times and bad economy, you know, it's pretty easy to. Pretty easy to latch on to used goods. And we, we specialize in used stuff, so you know, even used movies and stuff. That this stuff sells pretty well. Pretty yeah. well. <laughs> I think the real reason they matter is that guys just still love them after you know. It's just something. It's just something about something about the artwork, the big, the bigness, and the realism of it. You know, it's just so big and <laughs> I like the smell of them. I don't know. It gets a little crazy towards you, you really boil it down. I'm a little just neurotic about it. But the action, I mean, in my hand, when the shooting of that, you know, that kind of stuff, I love, I just love, I just love them. I just love them. I don't know. It's a problem. Yeah. I've got lots. <laughs> The border, there's an issue there. There's, there's an underlying addiction issue in some way there. Uh, here we are at the space. Uh, this is a music venue that I uh, own and operate here in Salem, Oregon, 1132 Broadway. The difference is that this is the computer is a digital device. It's digital, this is analog, and the reason it's different I'll try to keep it simple. 
is because this is basically taking pictures of what you've recorded. It's not an actual true representation of the room you were in, uh, possible other ambient uh, noise or other, other anomalies that could be in the room. So this is taking a million bits of pictures every second or whatever, um, I, and I forget, um, Edgar might be another good person to ask about that stuff if you talk to him. Um, but this is basically, say this is the music here. Um, it's like got the beat to it, you know. It's got the heartbeat of the pulse of the music, right? Well, this, it's not getting all of this. It's only taking pictures of the sections that you make it take pictures of, which is where it comes down to, and that's called quantization. And that basically comes down to how high of a definition, how specific a picture do you want it to take. However, no matter what, it's not capturing everything. It's taking a digital photograph. Whereas with tape, you've got the line here of what's re being recorded, and it's literally on tape. You know, it's literally copying every little nuance. I mean, let's say for, I mean, argumentatively, digital would be able to take this picture, but we're, like, say on a microscopic level, it wouldn't be picking that up. It would, you know, the, t the picture might pick up here to here, and here to here, but it's not picking up the little nuances in between. And that nuance, I mean, this creates a whole other world, these spots that, let's pretend, they're just not picked up, for example. That creates this whole other feeling, you know? And it's a straight representation of what room you're in and what instruments you're using, and there's no break in the recording. Whereas if you record straight to uh, the digital device, it's literally taking really, really fast Polaroid snapshots of the sound you're making. Lot, there's basic record players that don't have any buttons, you know, maybe for somebody who wants it to be a little bit more straightforward and simple. And that way they can just hit like the big play button and it'll just go. But with this, for example, uh, there are two different speeds of record. That's 33 rotations per minute and 45 rotations per minute. And actually, I am sort of lying. There is a third, which is in the middle here, 78, which is the first one. I should have explained that. 78 is the oldest record uh, speed that there was. The records themselves were really, really heavy. And this is a fairly flimsy record. Um, I don't know what the actual going weight rate is for these. But there's certain records that you can buy that are heavier than others. And that's helpful for the needle and for the record itself so that it doesn't bounce the needle around. So there, those, there are all these dials, right? I mean, there's these things that we can screw with. Like, for even an example, I can make this go in reverse if I wanted to. And that's for, this is a more of a DJ turntable. A lot of, uh, you know, new artists use turntables as actual scratch pads, you know. Um, And that's basically all that is, is people getting really good at scratching. You know, and then... Uh, so, I mean, you can use it as a tool for art artistic... Actually, and so now, the turntable has become like this instrument. Now it's not, there's not a guitar or piano or drums anymore, you can actually physically use these as instruments themselves. This is the windmill we used to have on the roof here that that powered the turntable. Right there, Soundgarden. One day, Garth Brooks came about and said that he wasn't going to let his record be carried in stores that sold used CDs. And so I pulled all the product off the shelf on a Wednesday. The next day I go, I'm buying an ad in the paper. I'm going to have a barbecue in the back parking lot. And I invited the public to bring their Garth Brooks posters, VHS tapes, albums, 
and uh, we would barbecue them on the grill. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's something really special about records, and you know, the record industry never thought about that when they invented the CD. You know, the CD was this thing that was this indestructible, supposedly, um, piece of uh, physical music that people didn't have to worry about scratching. I mean, when you had vinyl, and even now, if you want the vinyl to sound good, you got to take care of it. Uh, the thing about vinyl was it was more like art. Um, a lot of people went in to record stores, they looked at the album covers, and sometimes the album covers drawed their attention to it, and they ended up looking at it and ended up buying it. Uh, at home, I listen to vinyl. Yeah. At work, because it, you know, a lot of promotional copies come in the mail for us to check out, but they don't send vinyl very often. So, uh, um, as you can see down here, these are the promotional copies that come in. Uh, I listen to a lot of CDs at work, but at home, I listen to most of vinyl. Record stores, independent record stores, are kind of like community centers and they're resource centers too. I mean, there's people that met their best friends in this store. There's people that met their spouses in this store. There's people that just, you know, found fellow record collectors in there. Oh, you like this band too? Oh, I like that band, you know, and they get in conversation. It used to be more like that in the 60s and 70s and 80s, and it's not as much like that now. This is the problem, is that people will accept inferior quality in music. When I was getting into music, especially in the early 70s part, the quality of the music was the most important thing. People bought really nice stereo systems so they could get better sound. People started buying like audiophile pressings, thicker gram vinyl, uh, virgin vinyl, things like this because they wanted the ultimate sound. And the w one thing that happened when we went from vinyl to CD is the CD music is compressed. So you lose a lot of the high end and the low end. And um, so you don't really get that quality of sound. And when you go to an MP3 um, and digital delivery, that even brings it down even more. So you're really listening to inferior sound. Definitely. Yeah. You know, I, I find that if you have the time to sit and actively listen versus carry on with your life and use it as a supplemental thing, but sometimes if you have the time to sit and listen in, in your living room, it's a, definitely the best way to hear music wider range of spectrum of sound, I believe, frequencies, I think you get better highs and better lows, depending on your system that you're playing back on, depending on the record itself, depending if you're listening to a new record versus a, one that's got a lot of wear on it, you know, some people like to hear the cracks and pops, and some people are perfectionists, and they don't want to hear any surface noise at all, you know, some bands have a louder sound than others, and some bands use their dynamics wider. A band like Modest Mouse or Pink Floyd or Supertramp, they have extreme lows in their music and they have bombastic highs. And when you have those quiet passages and you have a lot of surface noise, it takes away from the listening experience, in my opinion. Records, I believe, weren't for the masses, unfortunately, because not everybody handles things in the same manner. Some people could have a record for 30 years and it could look like the day it was bought if they handled it properly. But some people could pick up a record and handle it one time and do irreversible damage to it. And that is uh, unfortunate. And if I had the remedy to being able to fix a scratch on a record, I'd be one of the richest people in the country. <laughs> I just like to see the format it continue to spread and young, see young people continue to buy records. I think it's a fun hobby and you know, it's a lot better than hanging out at bars and 
drinking your money away and waking up broke the next day and you have nothing to show for, at least with the record, you have something that's, you're going to be able to hold on to for a lifetime and it's not going to go away. This, I swear to God, this is true. I swear to God, it's true. Right. I heard it with my own ears. Um, a friend of mine uh, was really into blues when I was uh, in high school, and he had a Buddy Guy record, Buddy Guy the Blues Guitar Player. And uh, it, on this record, there, there's this one spot on the record where it developed a skip, so it would keep jumping back and repeating the same thing over and over and over again. And the, uh, what happened is, but and I don't know, this is just an accident, a freak accident that happened like this, but the Buddy Guy is starting to, you know, play, you know, something like that, and then he goes, hit it. And it got stuck on that. So we go, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. And I, this is, I swear to God, this is true. If you nudge the needle just exactly the right distance, he would go, ah, that felt good. <laughs> I don't feel that way myself. Uh, but it is a different uh, medium. And I have heard uh, music, some really good musicians even... Uh, Complain, for instance, about how on a CD uh, the sound is so complete that that uh, that you never get a real pianissimo. You know that there's so you, there's a lot to hear even in the mo most quiet sections of the music that there's still a lot to listen to. Whereas on vinyl, on a pianissimo, you can't hear it. I really value listening to music, straight up. Yeah. Um, that's why every day I sit in this room with my record player and I listen to music. I don't, I don't turn the TV on. I don't play video games. Uh, I try to not even twiddle my thumbs. But you know, you get what I'm saying. It's like that's important to me. The sound is important to me.